Hello there, my name's Laura Harvey. I'm the Outdoor Learning Manager at Essex Wildlife Trust and I'm down amongst the flowers this morning. It's spring and there are lots of flowers out and about. They're all different shapes and sizes and they're all shouting, advertising their presence to bees and butterflies and other nectar feeding insects. They want them to come and do a job for them because they can't move around. They want them to come and pollinate them. What's pollination? The plant can't move around, so it gets the bees and butterflies to move things around for it, transporting pollen on their back from one flower to another. They pay the bees and butterflies in nectar. The bees and the butterflies come to the flower to go in to get their nectar. They end up with tiny bits of pollen on them. They take that pollen to another flower, go inside. The pollen gets knocked off them and into the flower where they can use it to make their seeds. Some flowers make one seed, other flowers, like a poppy, can make 1,000 seeds, one poppy. That is why it's so important to leave flowers where they are. Take photos, but try really hard not to pick any of them. There are six main groups of flowers. The rose family, the daisy family, the carrot family, the pea family, the cabbage family and the mint family. I'm going to have a hunt around my garden to see what different types of flowers I can find. The first group of flowers we're going to look at are the rose family. Flowers in the rose family have five petals. You can see them here. One, two, three, four, five. This is a flower on an apple tree, apple blossom. So apple trees are in the rose family, so are strawberries, no flowers here yet. I found some strawberries over here though, these are wild strawberries, and you can see the five petals. Roses are in the rose family of course. But this rose hasn't opened yet. You can see there's a bud, so in the next few days it might open. It's also got some green fly on it. The next family is the daisy family, or composite. This is an ox eye daisy. It's really big, as big as an ox's eye. They're called composite because they're not made up of one flower, but they're made up of lots of different flowers. That means they have lots of nectar, because each of these has a nectar present. Flowers in this group include daisies of all different kinds. Daisies open in the day, that's why they're called day's eye. Dandelions are included in the daisy family. Other flowers in the daisy family include thistles. This is a globe artichoke thistle or cardoon, but there's no flower here yet. It's got a lovely shaped leaf though, hasn't it? The next family is the carrot family. This may include carrots, parsnips, Parsley, fennel, and this one here, which is a cow parsley, it's a wild plant. The proper name for this group is umbellifer because their flowers are like an, a bit like an umbrella. The petals are not all the same shape and size. So they have some smaller petals and some larger petals. But again, lots of flowers means lots of nectar. So this one is cow parsley. You sometimes get some 
So cow parsley grows where cows grow. Hogweed smells just like pig farms, that's another one. And then you get giant hogweed and wild parsnip, which can irritate your skin if you touch them. But cow parsley has a lovely smell. I had a child once who said cow parsley flowers smell like chips with vinegar on. The next family is the cabbage family. So this is cabbages, Brussels sprouts, kale, broccoli, but then also things like hedge garlic. And there's lots of wild I'm just a bit distracted. Did you hear that it's a little goldfinch singing in the tree behind me? Anyway, back to these cabbage family. They're also called crucifer because, can you see, each flower has four petals, like the shape of a cross, the crucifix. The next family is the mint family. So that includes mint, lemon balm, the woodland. I couldn't find any mint flowers in my garden, but this is in the mint family. It's called yellow archangel and it grows in woodlands. The flowers in this family are like tubes and the bee or butterfly has to go right down into it to collect the nectar and gets pollen on its back when it does it. The last large family of flowers is the pea family. This is wisteria. It's quite common in lots of gardens, climbing up the fronts of houses. Other pea family flowers include peas and beans, but also plants like gorse and broom, and even licorice. So this is a bush that isn't a member of the pea family. If you look very closely, you can see those flowers that are not round like a normal flower. <laughs> see the pea flower there? If you cut it in half from top to bottom, it's symmetrical. But it... You can also see, you see the long stamen with the pollen on the ends, waiting for the insect to come along. And it's full, so that's broom. And if I just pull it back a bit, you can see the branches of the broom. You can imagine in the olden days, people collecting these branches and tying them onto a hazel stick to sweep their floors with. Maybe you could have a look around your garden or out of your window. How many different colours of flowers can you see? Can you find some flowers from the different groups we've talked about? And can you watch flowers as they develop and grow over time, losing their petals and becoming the fruits and dropping their seeds? Have fun, stay safe and stay wild.